to do periods the godly way. What does that even mean? Welcome back or to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley. I love making videos similar to this one, but I also do fashion content, travel, morning routines, vlogs, etc. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I hope you subscribe, become part of the family. But um, without further ado, let's just get into today's video. So this video, we're going to be talking about all things periods, but how to do periods the godly way. What does that even mean? What does that look like? So a little backstory for me, I know the week before my period and the week of my period, I'm like a beast. Okay. I'm very irritable. I'm very like want to isolate, want to be left alone. I'm feeling very, very, very emotional. I'm just not in a good space spiritually. Um, it's, a deep emotional warfare if you will and so with that being said how do we incorporate god into this really really tough space that we're going through we know that periods are normal that however that does not make the feelings you're going through any less valid or less comforting you know yes it's normal but we're still facing a lot of heavy emotions heavy pains um it's just not the best okay and so how do we incorporate god during this season during this time on our periods what does that look like how can we start doing that so this is what i want to talk about in today's video but let's rewind because i want to pray of course really trying to remind myself before i start my videos to pray um just so that those who are watching can be receptive of this video and they can reach the right audience so if you can close your eyes but if not, that's totally fine. Just listen as we pray. Holy Spirit, I come to you right now asking for your guidance on today's video that it may reach the right people that need to hear this, God. We know that periods are not easy, but I'm coming to you praying that during this message, during this video, we will be able to incorporate your word and your love during that time, God, knowing that not only is it normal, but we also can know that it's still difficult and it's okay to validate our emotions but also putting you in the center of it all god so we just give this this pain these feelings we give it all to you god requesting that you come in as always to heal to restore to clean to fix to make better and to continue to spread your love to us god and your mighty mighty name amen so you know just a simple prayer to start this video off but again i hope that this message find those who it needs to and without further ado let's just get into the video so, as I mentioned, I was a type of girly who just always had bad periods, okay? I'm talking about I would get fevers, I would be really irritable, I would have cramps out of this world. It would really feel like someone was stabbing my womb, couldn't walk, I would have really bad migraines. It was just, it was just horrible in all the ways, horrible. And for a very long time, I just hated my periods. I didn't know how to navigate them. I didn't know how to really give my body what it needed to heal, to feel. And so I just hated my periods for a long time, okay? And it wasn't until recently I was scrolling on TikTok and I saw this video. I will put her name in the description. Hopefully I remember um, to give her credit. But I was scrolling on TikTok and I saw her video where she was pretty much saying she has not seen any content or very little content revolving around how to handle being on your period as a Christian. And I was like, you know what? That is so true because now I'm thinking about it, I really never, you know, was given proper guidance or proper like education, if you will, on how to navigate your period as a Christian. What does that look like? What does that mean? etc now we know as believers of god as followers of god that we're called to a different life than the world which means while we would go through very much so some of the same things our brothers and sisters would it's a different approach now that we must have because we're called to christ because we are deciding to be a disciple of christ to pick up our cross every single day and follow god there's just things that we must handle and do differently than others and that includes our periods so 
to break it down in the sense of like what you know periods are um for women we go through a 28 day cycle now for men however they have a 24 hour cycle you you, you see where i'm giving okay so it's a lot different men their cycle is a 24 hour span versus women we have a 28 day span so you have your menstrual cycle your menstrual stage of your cycle and we all know this as women because we have one and this can last anywhere between three to seven days depending on the woman of course after your um, menstrual stage you have your follicular stage this is more of like your spring time and this will last between seven to ten days after your follicular stage you have your over ovatory stage ovatory stage i'll put the words up because i'm kind of like going blank but um that is going to last between three to four days this would be like your summer time then after that you have your what is it lute not luthal it's your little little stage <laughs> again i'm putting the words up there but it's like your little stage which this is going to be now between 10 to 14 days okay However, for a man, they're going to go through all these stages within a 24-hour span. So they're sleeping, they're getting their rest. That would be like their winter and the menstrual, right? They're like resting, getting their rest. Then they, you know, wake up now and they're feeling like energized. They're feeling like they're ready to go. Okay, there's the follicular stage. Then now, you know, it's kind of winding down, kind of getting, you know, in the evening time. They're probably going out with friends after work, doing something relaxing, right? That's now their... Um, you know, it would be like the, what is it, um, summertime. And then they have their fall time, which would be like the, you know, um, luthal phase, which would be more so, okay, they're now like, okay, I've spent time with friends, I've spent time with boys. All right, see y'all later. I'm about to go home. I'm about to go to sleep. And this is all that they are experiencing within a 24-hour cycle. However, for women, it is a 28-day cycle. So we're already, you know, going through a lot more, which is why you can feel these feelings of depressed, of sadness, of like really, really low energy. One moment you have really, really high energy for days upon days. And you can just be thinking to yourself, like, what's going on in my body? Because like two days ago, I was so high with energy and I was feeling so good. And now today I'm like, barely want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. It can be really hard to navigate like what's happening, right? And so that's why it's important for us to know our bodies and again, how to incorporate God into this because we want to make sure that we're doing things godly way and not the world way. So when you're on your menstrual, this to me, I would like to say is my Sabbath week. Okay, it is my Sabbath week in the sense of phone is on do not disturb. I really try my hardest to limit conversations with people unless it's urgent or it's, you know, a need type of conversation other than that my phone is on do not disturb i really don't want to text a lot i do not want to be on the phone a lot i rather just kind of like have my phone put to the side off the way you go another thing i do during this time is no extra work so y'all know i love to make youtube videos i love to make little tiktok videos instagrams etc but during this time, I do not post any content. I do not make any content, edit any content, none of that. For me, I know it's kind of difficult to just take a week off of work. You know, you kind of got to like go to work. So for me, I really try to limit the amount of work I'm doing. And that includes my extra activities like social media. I do not post during this time. And the work that I do have to do, I limit it to like three taskers a day. I don't put too much to do on my list. I'm like, okay, what are the three top things I can get done today? That's going to be my focus. And then after that, I'm good. I'm not going to pile on all these extra to-dos that don't need to get done today. No. Um, I really keep my workload as little to none existing as possible. Another thing I do 
um during this time is i rest okay so usually monday through fridays i'm like up pretty early like 4 a.m in the morning because i like to work out before work i like to you know have my quiet time with god and then i have to be on the road to work because i'm kind of far from my job so i'm usually up early however on my menstrual i take the extra rest so i you know don't work out during this time or if I do really want to move my body, it's after work and I go for like maybe a walk or something. But I'm getting the rest. I'm not trying to be up really early during this time. I'm resting and I'm having a lot more slower mornings. You know, making some tea, just a simple skincare routine. I'm not doing a lot in the sense of the mornings, okay? Another thing is also during this time, it is crucial to feel feel everything feel your emotions because they're going to be heavy however make sure during this time this is where a lot of praise and worship can happen and just going to god so i like to have prayer corners or even in your car you know if you maybe don't have like a prayer corner in your room even just on your way to work you know i put on my gospel music and i just cry out to god this is really the time where i'm deepening my relationship with god because i'm no longer trying to do it on my own i'm no longer trying to distract myself from how i feel as if like i'm fine and i'm like going to god in his presence this was like something i recently started and i totally noticed a difference because while yes when my period would normally end i would you know have the physical changes where I'm like okay no more blood um but i would still be mentally drained i would still feel mentally exhausted however during this time where i'm really in sabbath i'm really in silence i'm really just in prayer i'm really just in praise and worship with my father after my period ends not only do i have that physical shift that physical change right i also feel mentally more refreshed mentally more strengthened mentally more stable if you will and it's because i wasn't trying to just disregard god and act as if he didn't exist but i was coming to him i'm like god right now i'm irritable right now i don't feel okay because on your period there's going to be a lot of things that's coming out to the surface not because they weren't there but because it's just more heightened now so you may find yourself more triggered than usual you may find yourself you know more irritable you may find yourself um feeling a lot more worrying about finances about life or comparing yourself when you're in these really deep feelings it's so crucial during your period to go to god because that's when you can hear him the most because now you're deepening that emotion right so for me when my period come and i'm feeling a feeling right i'm like oh i'm just worrying and i'm worrying and I'm worrying and it feels so intense i go to god because now i'm really going to be able to hear him because of the intenseness and especially because i've silenced the noise from the outside world like social media people family friends i can really take time to hear god because i'm in silence i'm in solitude so the main things to think about when you're on your menstrual how to walk with god during this time is to get in silence silence the noise silence the distractions get in solitude if you will you know take time to really go to him in prayer and worship you should not be spending time on you know your phone a lot during this you should not be doing a lot of work during this time really consider it like a sabbath week if you will for me i know that it can be difficult to have like a sabbath day you know once a week because Monday through Friday, I'm up early, I'm going to work, I'm doing all my things. Then on Saturdays, that's the time where okay, I don't have to work. So I try to, you know, do my social media content and I try to like plan little dates for myself and I try to like go out and explore. So that's like Saturdays. And then Sundays, I'm usually like helping with my church or like volunteering, going to church. Then after church, I'm coming home, I'm doing big deep clean and after i clean i'm meal prepping for the week so sometimes i can't be honest and say i fall into a rhythm of not having like a sabbath day or like a day of just rest not doing anything not going outside not you know driving like where i just don't do anything it's really difficult for me sometimes because of the schedule i've created but when my period comes it's like an immediately sign for my body like okay you've been pushing yourself a lot you've been doing a lot this is the time to rest. This is the time where you, you don't need to be doing all that. So those are some things to think about when you're on your menstrual cycle. Um, again, as a Christian, 
Number one, this is your Sabbath time. Go to God, spend time with him, release how you feel. I would also highlight um, getting a prayer journal. This is the time to really probably write out how you're feeling, those prayers, because you better look back on them and see how God came in, healed, clean, restored. So many things that you felt like were just impossible at the time. Now, after your mental cycle, you go into your follicular um, stage. This is going to last, as I mentioned, anywhere between 7 to 10 days. This would be considered your spring. You're now kind of like blossoming, you're feeling better, you're getting back to yourself. This would be really good to join community groups or start community groups. Because again, you're starting to feel more energized, starting to feel more like yourself. This is also a time where I would say I feel like more more creative during this time. I have like a lot of just different ideas. So write those ideas down and start them. This is again a moment where you could do more like prayer boards, prayer vision boards, if you will, where you're just writing out some things and then trusting God that it will happen to start those ideas. So if you've been wanting to, I don't know, start a new business idea, this is the time to write it out, to give it to God and then start. Because we know that like while God is powerful, we also have to do our part, which is starting. You know, if you want a job, but you haven't even applied for the job, it's like, okay, you know, you got to do your part as well. Um, another thing too during this time, I love prayer walks, going out in nature for hikes or just even a 15 minute walk, being amongst God's creations, it's really beautiful. Also, you can, you know, if you want to go into more foods, I would say this is time to eat a lot of more cleaner and healthier. I love fruits, you know, salads, um, veggie wraps, just more things that are healthier and cleaner during this time. Now that you're done with your follicular stage, you're going to go into your ovulatory stage. This is going to last between three to four days. This is where you're going to be feeling really, really confident more. You're going to be feeling more, you know, exerted. So I would say this is time to be more social and also to volunteer. Get out of your community and to volunteer more. Again, you're going to be feeling more social. You're going to be feeling more confident in yourself. So this is the time to have those meetings, speak out. And again, so I would suggest volunteering during your ovulatory stage can i talk volunteering i would also suggest you know um speaking bold prayers because again you're starting to feel more confident you're starting to feel more comfortable speak those bold prayers and start those bold um you know goals and dreams that you have and believe in god for so if you've been having a really bold you know prayer that okay you know i'm gonna start i don't know i'm gonna start going back to teaching dancing this is the time to get in contact with those people. This is the time to, you know, go see different places in your community. Again, volunteering, doing those bigger goals. Um, I have my notebook as well because I kind of wrote down some things. So I just want to try to make sure I'm covering everything. I also wrote down on here, go to a good workout class. Again, you're going to be feeling really, really more confident. You're going to be feeling more like, okay, I can do this, girl boss. So this is the time to go to a little fun workout. That could be a spin class, Pilates, hosting a workout class, something like that. Also, show, show more forms of kindness. So I did mention volunteering somewhere, but that doesn't always have to be. You can just, you know, when you're out in the community, you know, you've maybe seen someone that doesn't have a, a car right now. You know, offering them a ride to the grocery store, offering them a ride to work, offering them a ride, you know, somewhere that you that you can. Um, again, to just be more kind, you know, we know that as Christians we are supposed to be a representation of God, which is love. And I think sometimes we can think that in order to show love, we have to do these really, really big things, you know, go off the country, missionary work. Those are important and those are beautiful, but there are so many ways you can show love just through your everyday life. Giving someone a smile, giving someone a hug, you know, again, helping somebody, you know, they don't have a car right now, helping them just drive to their grocery store. There are so many things you can do to show kindness where it doesn't have to be this huge, you know, outreach type of thing. So this is the time where I would really stress doing that. Now, after your... Um, after that stage, you're going to go into your, um, girl, what is it? L Ludo stage. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong now. Sometimes I'm horrible when it comes to, <laughs> uh, like, pronouncing certain words. So, again, all the words will be on the screen. But this is the time where you're now going to want to slow down, okay? Because <laughs> your body is going to be feeling it. So, 
you want to really try to focus from doing to just being being now in the presence of yourself and the presence of god most importantly of course so i would say some things to do during this season um or the cycle if you will to especially deepen your relationship with god is to journal really journal how you're feeling don't feel this need to try to cover it up like you're okay when you're not like journal like hey god today or this week i've just been feeling a lot of comparison i've been feeling really sad your emotions again are going to be really heightened during this time so it's good to journal that out and give it to god another thing you can do is start to go on more you know like doing slower workouts so you're transitioning from those really really high paced workouts to more slower workouts or maybe no workouts at all during this time depending on what your body really needs another thing i wrote down is silence silence with god i mentioned this in the menstrual um stage of being really in sabbath solitude but this is another thing you can do in your luthal stage because it is now preparing you for that menstrual for your menstrual stage so really being more silent you know i wouldn't suggest booking a lot of like social activities doing a lot of things you know i again would say you know don't put on a lot of like taskers when it comes to your church volunteering really really just try to be in more of a silence atmosphere a more of a you know um solitude environment you're slowing down you can also really take more time to have home cooked meals put on maybe a sermon and really just cook a home cooked meal make a you know vibe if you will also back to sermons this is the time to watch more sermons because again your body is now shifting more from like go 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 to slowing down so you'll be more receptive to really hear what is being said because you're in a very more slower calmer state so again i would take time to watch your favorite sermons take notes on those sermons really get into a good um journal and release how you're feeling um write those prayers out that you're going through and also praise and worship as well during this time you know put on your favorite music playlist and just surrender it during your luthal stage i would say it's a time of surrender surrendering the need to always be perfect surrendering the need to like be hustle and burn surrendering this like okay i have to do all these million and one things because your body is not in that season right now and so when you're in this season you really want to surrender just surrender it to god so that now once your menstrual cycle comes you can be in a state of like okay i've surrendered it i've gave it to god how i'm feeling i gave it to god that i'm not okay i'm trusting him now with it and so those are just some things obviously everybody you know body is different i know some people have periods and like it's a breeze to them you know hey let's be nice <laughs> but for me i know i struggle a lot with like just feeling irritable not wanting to trust god wanting to kind of feel even angry at the like slightest thing somebody breathes too loud i'm like oh my gosh and so i really was not navigating that time right my period as a time of still reflecting what god has called me to and what god's wanted me to do you know if you would have been around me during my period you probably be like okay she is definitely not a representation of god right now okay i was everything but that but that's not an excuse our periods are not an excuse to just do things our way and not god's way but we do want to be mindful that our bodies are going to be going through a lot so it's okay to shift right so for me i know that during my mentor stage, I'm just not in a space to wake up as early. And that's okay, too. You guys not saying, oh, uh, in order to be loved by me, you need to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and, you know, be in prayer for an hour. That's not what God is requesting of us, just to spend time with him. So for me, during my menstrual, I've learned that early mornings are just not the best for me. I feel really, really tired. I'm just not in a good space. So I shifted to where... I wake up slow and then I'm thankful that I have a job where um, my coworkers are Christian as well. And so I bring my Bible with me to work. I bring my journal with me to work. And when we have time where it's not loud or like on my lunch break, I just go find me a tree and I spend time with God because now I've kind of woken up. I've had time to adjust to like being awake. So I'll go to a tree, I'll sit with my Bible, I'll sit with my journal, and I'll just, you know, spend time with God. It's okay to shift things depending on how your body's feeling, but to make sure that we are still understanding what it means to follow God, to live for God uh, in every season that we're in. So, sorry, I got a notification. So with that being, with 
with all of that being said can i talk with all of that being said that wraps up today's video i hope this video was um you know making sense because i feel like sometimes i can ramble and i hope that you know you were encouraged by this video again that this video was you know push the people that need to hear this like i said again as me being someone for a long time not knowing how to navigate having a period and being a christian and just wanting to send some love for you during these times but again be gentle with yourself go to god he's there he wants you to come to him so that he can start the work so i will see you all next week or yeah next week <laughs> i took this week off because again i was on my period but i will see you all next week god's will and if no one has told you i'm here to tell you that i love you i am proud of you you are doing enough you are exactly where you're meant to be